five, six, seven, eight. Hi, and welcome to All Things Internet, a show where we talk about things we see on the internet that usually have to do with the internet. And Emily sometimes tries a little bit to fact check whatever she decides I think might be relevant. Here we are focused on facts, figures, and fundamental rights. Ah, oh, look at you slipping that in. I know. I'm Rachel Ballinger. I'm Emily Brostaff. We, you know, we're still working on the fundamental rights. Yeah. We got the facts and figures down. Yeah. We're just, we're, we're just egging on the fundamental rights. Yeah, we're advocating for it. Uh, yes. Okay, well, use a big girl word if you want. <laughs> it was my word of the day. <sighs> um, I just realized I should probably be charging batteries. Uh, probably. It's, Here. It's right over there. I'll entertain the people Go. while you do that. Hello, my name is Emily Brostaff. I am five foot three. Um, I have never, I broke one bone and I'm in a medical journal, in case you're wondering. What medical journal? I don't know what it's called. I keep meaning to look it up. When I was four or five years old, my mom took me to an SPCA to go play with the cats because that's ethical. And when we got there, I was playing with a kitten and it scratched me. No big deal, right? It happens. It wasn't a mean kitten. It was just trying to play. Um, three days later, I woke up. My armpits were swollen to the size of golf balls. My mom thought I had leukemia. She re- r- rushed me to the hospital. And I get there. All these doctors are flooding in and out of the room. I'm loving it. I am the center of attention. This is my dream. This is literally what I've been living for, working towards my whole five years of existing. I want to be everyone's center of attention. Well, I am. They poke. They prod. I cry. I get a juice box. Everything is fine. My mom's sobbing in the corner of the room because she thinks, this is it. My daughter has leukemia that's what's happening. A doctor walks in and looks at her and says, can I have some people with cameras come in? And my mom said, sure, why not? They took a bunch of pictures of me with my armpits. And then the doctor comes in and says, mom, you can breathe. It's not leukemia. It's cat scratch fever, like the song from the 80s. (laughs) It's a bacteria you get sometimes when cats scratch you. So anyway, I'm in a medical journal, my little lumpy armpits. Well, welcome to all things internet. This is what happens when you give Emily a microphone, a camera, and no direction. <laughs> I she, panic. <laughs> she will not stop talking. No. <laughs> I've tested it and got bored because she just didn't stop talking. I can just go and go. Bored because I didn't get to speak, not because what you were saying. Oh, was I know. Boring. I'm fascinating. Yeah, but I also want to talk. Yes. Mm. All right. The camera's crooked. Well, <laughs> I'm just a mess. We just, hold on. Keep Emily, go. Wow. So, when I was seven. <laughs> So here's the thing. Well, I was out of town and I just got back into town and I have therapy in 53 minutes. We didn't plan this very well, but we did. In theory, we could get it all done. Oh, yeah, for sure. It's just in ADHD practice. We Mm, might not. Well, my medicine has not quite kicked in yet. I am just starting my second cup of coffee for today. So welcome to the show. We love (laughs) you. All right. You ready to hop into some news? Wait, first. How are you doing? Um, Dang it. <laughs> I wanted to ask her. You can't <laughs> give me a pause. I'll take it. Um, I'm doing really well. I, I snuggled the boys last night. I got a whole seven hours. <gasps> you got seven hours? Three more hours than normal. And I feel like we have a good show planned. So I love that for you. What about you? What if I don't laugh at anything you say? Well, I have learned to deal with this. Because oh, sometimes go. I'll say stuff really funny. Like last episode, is mayonnaise is an instrument? And you're like this. I don't know what that, and I, I got it. It was SpongeBob afterwards, but yeah. it took some explaining. That's okay. I've learned to, to deal with people not laughing at my stuff all the time. All right. I cry about it later in my own therapy, which was at 10 o'clock this morning. <laughs> Ta-da! How are you? I'm good. I just got back from a little staycation uh, with Abby uh, tonight, a little romance. Uh, we had a lot of fun. We got massages and watched a bunch of movies and shows in bed. Aww. We watched I Love Lucy. <laughs> like, I don't think I've ever watched a single episode of that. It was so weird. Yeah. Um, but I realized that Abby's humor is like old timey humor. Old, like, oh, we watched like What's Up Doc with Barbara Streisand last night. Yeah. So old movie. I've never heard Abby laugh so much at a movie. Oh, my God. And it was like dumb cl- old humor. Not I was like, do you like the Three Stooges? She goes, no, that's slapstick. Yeah. But she was cracking up because all these cars kept hitting the same thing in a chase scene. And I was like. I guess it's funny, but like, all right. <laughs> I can never get her sense of humor. Um, yeah. Oh, but yeah. <laughs> that's as she's happy. Oh, I'm, yeah. But I, I never know what's going to land. I think I like it because it's like a challenge for me. Like, mm. I can usually hone in on people's sense of humors and then make them laugh. Yeah. You know, whether like the sassy, sarcastic puns, dry, right. you know, whatever, be laughing at myself. I can figure it out. Right. 
I can't with her. And now you know. Well, I don't know. Because, like, I'm like, oh, it's slapstick. Like, whoop, whoop. And she's like, no. <laughs> You're just going to have to watch, like, all the episodes of I Love Lucy and just learn how to adapt to that personality. Yeah, pretty much. There pretty much. Go. Yeah, but we had a great uh, two days. So I'm feeling refreshed. And I have therapy in 50 minutes. And I have nothing to talk about. Uh, okay. Well, I'll give you something to talk about. <laughs> go for it. <laughs> what do we got do, this week? Do you like that segue? I did. Thank you. I've been working on them. Um, all right. Chrissy Teigen and John Legend welcomed their newest baby on January, Friday the 13th. Um, a little girl named, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing this correctly, Esty Maxine Stevens. Uh, Chrissy wrote on Instagram, she's here. Esty Maxine Stevens. The house is bustling and our family cannot be happier. Daddy sheds nightly tears of joy seeing Luna and Miles so full of love. And I'm learning you still need diapers with a C-section. We are in bliss. Thank you for all the love and well wishes. <laughs> oh, she had a C-section. Okay. Yeah. I think that was her way of saying it. Probably. Yeah. yeah. And this comes two years after Chrissy and John suffered the pregnancy loss with, yes. with their their uh, second son, Jack, back in 2020. And she's been super candid, like on uh, Instagram, especially about like her journey, like with the fertility shots. and Yeah. And I feel like uh, miscarriages are being talked about more and more because they happen so much more than everyone thinks. And I'm glad that people are finally saying something now oh right because people are so many women think if it happens to them they're like why like what did i do wrong and it's right like, no it's not you it's literally Just happens part of life yeah. yeah and it sucks and it's sad i right. grieve it but and the and like the more that people talk about it the more it's just going to become like an accepted thing and people are yes. i think like you said are going to feel less guilty about it yeah less guilty but more people will be more accepting of it yeah yeah so yeah congratulations right. to them um, we have more updates on the Britney situation. They're not conspiracy theories this time. Of course you have more updates on the Britney thing because <laughs> you know that's all you care about is Number Britney. one fan. <laughs> oh um, okay. So in case this is your first episode that you're tuning in, we've been reporting the last couple episodes that there's something super suspicious going on with Britney and her husband, Sam. If you are normal Jane like me, you'd have no idea. Right. I, I even follow Britney on Instagram and I'm like, that oh, Britney bring Britney. Oh my God. Yeah. I just, I'm like, I'm very much stuck on the. Britney conspiracy algorithm on TikTok and then TMZ has been weirdly getting into because they're they're normally like I don't want to say they're a reputable source like they're trash but they at least like don't normally report conspiracies yeah and even they've been kind of like delving into some stuff where I'm like that's not fact but it's interesting and I'm gonna yeah. read it um but yeah we've been there have been rumors that like she's missing she's being held in a mental facility that she's escaped the country that she has a body double like you know, it's been all over. Yeah. You know, um, well, and these have been like these rumors have been perpetuated because no one's been able to capture her uh, through the paparazzi. So yeah. they've been seeing Sam out and about. He's been front and center of the camera, but no one's seen Britney for months. And so people are like, this is just making people even more suspicious. Mm -hmm. But that was until uh, last week when Britney finally was spotted out at a restaurant and it did not go well. Um, so in a TMZ article, they wrote, eyewitnesses tell TMZ Brit, Brit and Sam showed up with a bodyguard at Joey Restaurant in Woodland Hills. I've never heard of it. Um, what? Huh. Joey? Joey? It's like capital J-O-E-Y. I'm going to look it up. Must be Because I lived in that area for a bit. Yeah. Um, they said, which was packed with patrons who immediately recognized her. From the start, the dinner was a bust for Brittany. Patrons pulled out their cell phones and began shooting footage of her. Britney got pissed and things went south quickly. Eyewitnesses say Britney became manic, yelling and talking gibberish, not another language, just unrecognizable speech. We, told, we were told Sam got visibly upset, abruptly stood up and stormed out the door. Two minutes later, witnesses say Britney got up and left the restaurant with her bodyguard, who soon returned to pay the bill. And of course, this caused, and, and there are videos of it online. Um, mm. So this caused a huge stir. One, because it was the first sighting yeah. since everyone's been saying basically, where is she? Two, people were claiming that it didn't look like her. And it was like to them, they said it was very obvious that it was a body double. The videos that I saw were so dark and blurry. It's like, how would you yeah. know unless you were there? And three, because if she really was in mental distress from people whipping out their cell phones and not respecting her privacy and being in her face and being obnoxious during the first time that she spotted out, if she really is having like a mental breakdown and in mental distress, the fact that Sam got up from the table and stormed out was like, what are you doing? Yeah. Dude, like, protect your wife. Yeah. Um, so there's someone that tweeted out, why did Sam leave Britney Spears there alone in the restaurant with her bodyguard instead of helping her out? But then I saw a tweet right underneath that that gave a little bit of a different perspective where I was like, OK, 
Um, someone said, stop blaming Sam. We don't know what happened. Even in the video we have, Brittany appears to be talking to the waiter, like in very... I don't like using the word manic unless someone's actually been diagnosed with a manic episode, yeah. but like very erratic speech. And like, it was very animated, erratic. Like, I don't know. So um, she said... Brittany appears to be talking to the waiter. She could have been saying some last words to the restaurant staff while Sam went to go get the car. We literally don't know. Oh, yeah. Because everyone was pulling out their phones and taking photos of her. So, of course, TMZ asked Sam for a comment after this video of him, quote unquote, storming out was circulating online. And he actually gave them a quote, which is kind of a first for him. And he said, everybody's filming. Everybody's doing their thing. I went to get the car to get the hell out of there. People just thought I had left her, but that didn't happen. It is what it is, man. It's frustrating, absolutely frustrating. When you sit down to have a meal, people get their cameras out and start filming you and stuff. It's disrespectful. You know what it is. Fame comes with that territory. And then even Brittany got on her own Instagram, quote unquote, if you believe she's running her Instagram. And she said, okay, but again, in true Brittany fashion, she's combining three subjects into one. <laughs> <clears throat> I literally I had to read this like five times and I was like I don't understand where the connection is but in her head it's there I watched natural born killers this morning which I'm assuming is like a documentary I don't know on Netflix maybe it sounds like it and I got enlightened and holy smokes she said holy s balls I'm sure (laughs) I'm sure okay so that's one subject and without a punctuation mark she hops into the restaurant um, incident. She's saying the movie has made her realize her actions at the restaurant blah. Me, I guess. Um, oh, I can I can make connections where others can't. Continue. Okay, there you go. This is my my true like, <laughs> amazing this in life. She said, "I'm sure I brought a million smiles to me, looking like Shrek at a restaurant. Even my best friend said, even my best friend couldn't wait to send it to me. Like the video of her being erratic. They don't think twice because they are natural born killers." I know the news is hyped up about me being a little drunk at a restaurant. It's like they'll be watching my every move. I'm so flattered they talk about me like a manic, like a maniac. Then have the balls to talk about all the negative things that have happened to me in the past. Honestly, it would be safer for me to compliment this world and F it up because if I become a prophet, pause, uh, if I become a prophet and don't create history we might have we might have something i'm just kidding but it's a good thought i know y'all are rooting for me and make sure to check out the shocking shrek picture of me i was like dang that's horrific yet there are two pics where i was normal it's just it i got it i know exactly what she said okay translate go okay so she was <laughs> watching natural born killer okay okay right and this made her realize that everyone at the restaurant was acting like a natural born killer okay she showed up and I'm, she's like, I'm sure everyone got a good laugh at how ridiculous and ugly I was and how, uh. and like, everyone's getting a laugh at the fact that I was drunk. And honestly, you guys love rooting for me, but at the same time, you love making fun of me. Oh. And she's like, I can either be a godsend or, or I can be just trash and you guys get to decide. And, but everyone out there is just a natural born killer. You just want to poke fun and you want me to fail, but you still want to root for me. And I don't really know what to do with it. That was beautiful. Thank you. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> this is what we're going to do from now on is I'm going to read you her text that in my head, I'm like, I literally do not compute this. And then I'm just going to have you. Translate. Yeah. So she was just saying, like, she knows she looked ridiculous and she was a little drunk and I, everyone just got a laugh from it. And they got something to talk about. And whatever she does, you either you're going to root for her or want her to fail. Okay, so you took her speech and made it poetic. There you go. So thank you for that. I literally would not have understood this otherwise. Yep. I was like, I don't. Okay. Yep. You did it. Mm-hmm. Um. All right. So that before we move on, because oh, that's it yeah. for Brittany. Yep. Mm-hmm. Let's check to see if we have another sponsor. No, just one spot. Th- today's spot. Do we have a sponsor? Let's check sponsor. Sponsor. <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Zocdoc. Have you ever been stewing about a health problem you have where you end up just resorting to texting your group chat to get your friends uneducated opinions on what's going on with your body and you're trying to find a cause for your symptoms that you stumbled down a TikTok rabbit hole full of questionable advice from self-proclaimed professionals? There are better ways to get the answers you want. ZocDoc helps you find expert doctors and medical professionals that specialize in the care you need and deliver the type of experience you want. On ZocDoc, you'll be able to find quality doctors who focus on you, 
listen to you, and prioritize your care. You won't feel rushed or brushed off. ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, are available when you need them, and treat almost every condition under the sun. When you're not feeling your best and you're just trying to hold it together, finding great care shouldn't take up all of your energy. Book an appointment with just a few taps on their app. Go to ZocDoc dot com slash all things internet and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's ZocDoc, Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash all things internet. ZocDoc dot com slash all things internet. And we're back. Okay, go. Um, We have to talk about Miley Cyrus's new music video. I can buy myself flowers. Flowers, yeah. I can pull my own hand. My hand on my own. I, I can c- take myself dancing. I, I actually have not listened to the, or seen the video. Um, okay, well, we're going to talk about the video. Abby's mad at me. She's like, why have you not been watching the video? Yeah. You're stupid. You're going to after this. She's like, Miley's hot. And I was like, I know Miley's hot. I've right. always liked Miley. Yes. She's like, why haven't you watched the video? I was like, I literally just like don't have time. I just keep forgetting. I mean, I, I, I watched it once I read this, but like. I keep forgetting too. But it's yeah. a whole shade on Liam. It's a whole shade on Liam. And it has the Bruno Mars song. Yes, but it gets even better. Tell me more. Okay, so Miley Cyrus just released her brand new single, Flowers. And I can buy my... Okay. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> okay, and BuzzFeed News describes her song as Miley opening up about finding joy and empowerment after a painful breakup. With the chorus centering around buying yourself flowers and learning how to embrace your independence. They just described it better than I ever could. Okay. So when it first came out, I watched the I video. I would have described it as she slapped Liam across the face metaphorically. Metaphorically. Yes. Well, I don't. And be an independent woman. I don't think I would have known it was about Liam because she's dated a couple of people since him until I read all of the that fan he theories. he dedicated the Bruno Mars song to her. I didn't know that. I didn't know that either. TikTok yeah, told me. Exactly. One sec. So when I first saw the video, I was like, focused on how hot she is. Second time I watched the video, (laughs) I was like, oh, this is like really good videography. Like whoever put this together, directed it. I was like, that's amazing. Well, it wasn't until the fans really started deep diving into the video and they started pointing out. I know they started pointing out all the Easter eggs. I was sucked in. So apparently, like we said, this whole music video allegedly is a huge F you to her ex-husband, Liam Hemsworth. So they were together for 10 years, married in 2018, but then divorced in 2019. These are the facts. These are the facts. Um, And the people online were like, this whole thing is completely pointed towards him. And this is why. So number one, the song dropped on January 13th. Which his is, birthday. Which is his birthday. These are our figures. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Fundamental rights are coming next. Um, <laughs> and basically, like Rachel was saying, the song lyrics might as well have said, hey, Liam, this is about us. Because, for example, in verse one, she says, we were good. We were gold. The kind of dream that can't be sold. We were right till we weren't built a home, watched it burn. <gasps> their Malibu home burned down. And their Malibu home burned down in November 2018. R.I.P. And then in the chorus, she basically took the Bruno Mars song, When I Was Your Man, uh, which the most iconic lyrics from that entire song were, I should have brought you flower. I should have bought you flowers. I should have held your hand. I should have taken you out dancing. Right. And she changed it to say, I can buy myself flowers. I can hold my own hand. I'll take myself out dancing. Fundamental rights. There we go. Feminism. <laughs> um, and as soon as fans heard this, they immediately pointed out that the Bruno Mars song, the one that she is referencing and playing off of the entire time, is one that they slow dance to at their wedding. That. That is the song Liam dedicated to her. He dedicated a breakup song to her. Yeah, it was kind of weird. Yeah. It was kind of weird. Um, that's like one time I dated a girl and she told me she wanted... <gasps> You've dated a girl before? Oh, okay. This is my coming out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fundamental um, rights. Uh, the, the girl I was dating, she wanted Sarah Bareilles' love song to be our song. And I was like, have you listened to the lyrics? It's... I don't want to write a love song is what yeah. Sarah Bareilles and is saying. Yeah, and she was like, oh. <laughs> like, I feel like some people just think it's like a catchy, cute song and they hear the word love and they're like, oh, it's a love song. It's called love song, so there's got to be a love song. Right, exactly. So no. Liam just was not paying attention. No. Um, and so, yeah, he, he apparently dedicated this song to her. So now she's like changing all the lyrics. And then the biggest of all, the Get biggest it. F you, allegedly. Do it. The mansion in which she shot the music video is the same mansion that he would rent out when he would cheat on her. <gasps> Stop. Mm-hmm. Ugh. Mm-hmm. 
So she is a godsend, right? She's Iconic. a queen. She's a goddess. Mm-hmm. She is all powerful, yep. all knowing. Yep. So according to Pop Fiction, they said multiple multiple sources are claiming that the house where the video for Miley Cyrus's Flowers was filmed was used as a motel by Liam Hemsworth and over and over 14 other women while he was married to Miley. I did not know he cheated that I much. I didn't know that either. I didn't know he cheated at all. I didn't know. Yeah, I knew that the first time they broke up, she made a reference that like she should have realized when she like saw things in his phone, like she thought they were funny, but then realized that it was him cheating later. Yeah. Like, I didn't know he cheated. Cheated, cheated. Cheated, 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 cheated. Right. Well, according to multiple you sources. Dirty little man. 14? Who 14? Who time? Who has the time? I've always thought about this. Yeah. The thing is when I like someone, I like give them everything. everything. Yeah. Um, don't worry, I'm in therapy. I don't I have a boundary. <laughs> but like I literally like I my time is devoted to you. Right. Like I get my work done, I have my friends, but like any of my extra time I would give to the person. I could not take on another. Right. And fourteen? Fourteen? Yeah. So apparently this was his like little Airbnb for his shenanigans and she was like gotcha <laughs> I love that so, I love that so much she hasn't come forward and confirmed it I don't even if it's true I don't think she ever will come forward and confirm it these so. are not these are allegedly not facts and figures yeah. but they are fundamental rights they are fundamental rights um okay and then randomly Kanye West got married to one of his employees stop it yeah leave it alone stop mm-hmm. so after he went he went missing so remember the, 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 and like no one was talking about this. I think because everyone's so done with him. But like, imagine going missing and no, and no he's like watching, like, like flip, flicking through the news, like trying to find someone talking about him missing. And it's like literally TikTok dances. Like no one cares. Yeah. Because uh, that's funny. I, We're all like, nope, Miley came out with a new song. Yeah. Everyone else go away. Pretty much. We're like done. Because I think the last thing we said about him is we were talking about all the anti Semitic stuff he was saying about Hitler being a good guy and him relating yeah. to nazis and then he just went blank like he went off grid missing good yeah it's, we we were not sad about it but then randomly he came back into view because he got married to his employee he, he was like how do i get people talking about me again right he said i'm gonna marry a 27 year old employee i hope she didn't sign a prenup okay but here's the thing nothing legal has been filed so everyone online is talking about how he married this 27 year old oh, he didn't do it he yeah. probably married her spiritually. Yes. So did her, she sign a spiritual prenup? Nothing has been. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't think so. We're so ready to I come know. back with your facts and figures. I know. Oh my god. Um, I'm gonna check in with the big man later to see. <laughs> <laughs> um, so her name is Bianca Sensory. Sensory. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, it would be Bianca West now. Right. So she's an architectural designer for Yeezy, and she's been with the company since 2020. She's originally from Australia, but currently has like lives in LA. Um, and she deactivated her Instagram after the marriage like leaked out. Um, and according to pay, oh, also, have you seen her? No, I literally have not seen anything about. This. Oh, okay. I couldn't remember if <laughs> I. You send me things in our DMs. Yeah, I don't look at them. Well, because I was wondering if that you sent me that one or I sent you that one. Because sometimes you send me stuff to like look. Yeah, into. but I don't get to look into it. I True. see a headline. I'm like, hey, hey, go check go, this out. Go do this. <laughs> yeah, she looks like a replica of Kim. Really? Like, there are rumors that she has allegedly had stuff done over the years to look more like Kim. Like, has gone to plastic surgeons with like photos of Kim and it said I want this wait she knows what she wants and he's got a type and he's got a type There's no shade on any of yep. that so according to page six um they said a source tells us the Kardashians are waiting to see if the disgraced rapper actually files marriage papers they aren't sure if this is a PR stunt they're waiting to see if he files the papers they're nervous because if it's real she could be in the children's lives so that's the main concern right now because oh. he's like obviously on his own has his own money they're divorced but the kids exist. but the kids yeah. Um, you're about to get your dog of the day. Blaze has been on a walk with our dog walker and he's about to come in. He's going to come in like a wrecking ball. I like a wrecking ball. Good boy. Come on. Come tell the people what you're thinking. Come tell the people what you're thinking. <laughs> dog of the day. And he's stinky. Yeah. He's like me. He never smells unless he's been outside. Then he smells like outside. He's stinky Blaise. boy. You didn't come in like a wrecking ball. 
He didn't. But just so you know, I can buy myself flowers. Continue. <laughs> and you can take yourself dancing. I can take myself dancing. Ooh, ooh. All right. Anyway, um, so they did not file the legal marriage certificate, um, but they did have a private ceremony at the Beverly Hills Hotel. And then according to the New York Post, they rented out a five-star luxury resort in Utah where the r- rooms start at 6400 a night. Casual. Um, <laughs> oh, also, side note, this is very random ADHD side note. Um, you watched White Lotus, right? Uh, the second season, and I'm halfway through the first. Don't ask me what happened. Okay, I, I've only watched the first season. I'm about to get into the second. Someone on TikTok, don't, don't spoil anything. <laughs> don't spoil anything. <laughs> Someone on TikTok did the math because the person that did White Lotus based the White Lotus Hotel that was in the first season off of the four seasons in Maui. Yeah, I've stayed up there. I really like it. Well, then. Um, and they did the math. And basically, the couple, the married couple in the first season, uh, th- uh, they spent throughout the, sh- the show. They were there in Hawaii for two weeks, I think. They, they did the math. They spent over $200,000 on their yeah. vacation. Yeah, that's how expensive that hotel is. Like, what? I, when I've stayed there, um, we either get a discounted rate because we'll promote that it's the Four Seasons. Um, but sometimes I feel awkward doing that a lot, so I don't. And I just try and find the cheapest room. It's really expensive. Oh, my God. I, it's I, really expensive. I looked into a couple of years back. I looked, uh, And this is a couple years back. Yeah. I looked into Airbnbs for Hawaii and they were starting at like $800 a night for like a studio. Yeah, they get expensive. That I, I don't think I'll visit. I'll go stay at a Four Seasons for a while. Because I, when I would go, it was, I, that was the one of vacation I would do a year. Oh, okay. And I would oh, save up. And yeah. I literally d- never left my house. So all right. I would just save all my money and go do that. Right. Now I leave my house more often. Yes. So got it yeah. <laughs> so anyway i'm downgrading myself a little bit <laughs> but it is yeah it'll break your bank You're like what yeah. yeah anyway sorry um but uh in the art in an article on us magazine um a source who's close to kim apparently says that kim hates this woman um <laughs> and she said that uh kim kardashian is not a fan of sensory um she has a bad opinion of her that this woman has done herself done stuff to herself to make her look like kim which makes her uncomfortable um, and then after Kim found out that they got married, she kind of went on a little, mm, I wouldn't say like social media rampage, but she posted some like sly stuff that, you know, she normally holds it together. Like, yeah. but this time she didn't. And, but I mean, it was still okay. She said, um, she, the first thing she posted when she found out was I'm in my quiet girl era. I don't have much to say. All right. Get it. Um, and then she said, just remember the black sheep usually turns into the goat. Keep doing you. I don't know what that means. The black sheep turns you, into the goat. So the black sheep's like... So the one that's like... The black sheep's like the outcast. Right. But it turns into the greatest of all time? I don't know. Who's the outcast? Kanye? I, well, if you're referring Sorry, to... Sorry, I can translate Britney Spears. I cannot translate like Kim, Kim Kardashian. Kardashian. Really, Kris Jenner. Um, yeah. and then another source told, oh, and then the last thing she put, and she deleted all of this afterwards, but the last thing she put was people who want to see you win will help you win. Remember that. I don't know what's going on. I don't know. Yeah. Um, uh. so, and then another source told the U.S. son that Kim is stunned and wondering how she's going to explain this to the kids. This last year, her only wish was, has been that Kanye will meet someone, anything to take his obsession off of her. But now it's just the inevitable drama as always. And Kim is left once again trying to protect the kids from the whirlwind. It really does seem like through all of this, she is trying to like be the best mom she can. And like, yeah, I've never doubted her like parenting. Her, not yet, yeah, well, not her parenting, but like her desire to want the best for her kids. Yeah. Whether she's doing that in like the healthiest manner, but like her heart has always been she loves her kids. Yeah. I feel yeah. like I've never really doubted that. No, I think she's very out of touch for what's best for them. Yes. But in her mind, yeah, she, she's I, doing what she knows to yeah. do. Yeah, I feel like, and feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like all the Kardashians and Jenners are that way. They like their, they love their kids. Like, they like them and they love them. They're two different things. Really. Right. Like, yeah. like there are things that they do that I don't agree with, but other, like I know in their point of view, in their minds, they're like, they love their children. Yes. And like want the best for them. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that's it for that. But speaking of marriage, or do oh, we need I to? I was going to check to see if we had another sponsor for go today. Go for it. Go for it. And then I'll do my segue after. Let's redo that. So that's it for the Kardashians. Great. Let's check to see if we have a sponsor for today. Sponsor, sponsor. And we're back. Speaking of marriage. What a great segue. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe we freaking forgot to talk about this on our first episode back. Jenna Marbles and Julian. 
Oh my god, the kings and queens of the YouTubes they and got Twitches. They got married. Yeah. They what? didn't show any of the wedding, right? Um, Julian has a little bit. Okay. Yeah, I didn't so look into it. After nine years of dating, they had an RV desert re- wedding last month where all the doggies were present. Only a few of the dogs were present during the ceremony, but all the dogs were like at their Airbnb mm, or okay. rental. Um, and Julian went on live stream to talk about the great news, revealing that they've actually been married a lot longer than they revealed to the Internet. Oh, I believe that. Yeah. yeah. He said initially it, they knew that they weren't going to share with the Internet um, for a while because they just wanted to have that to themselves. Yeah. Understandable. Um, yeah. But then the day after they got married, their dog Peach got really sick. Like she was in the hospital, like fighting for her life. I don't remember that. Yeah. So they were like, even if we did want to share, like that's just not the time. It's not the time. Yeah. And so like Peach obviously is all recovered now. Um, So once she recovered and once they had their like intimate, like me time with their Mm -hmm. news. Yes. um, Julian ended up going on Twitch on his live stream. Um, and he shared a bunch of their wedding photos, like ones that he took on actual film. Oh, cool. It was really cool. Um, he shared a couple of the professional photos that they got done. Um, and he told viewers during his live stream that most things from the wedding were thrifted in like, that's totally Julian and Jenna fashion to be like super sustainable. Um, so Jenna actually thrifted her wedding dress from a Goodwill and he uh, thrifted his tux from a Goodwill. Oh, that's cool. And he, like you would never know. No. Like they looked so good. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so we don't know much about the wedding other than that. Like he just shared a couple photos. He said they're keeping the rest of themselves because they really just want it to be their thing. But I literally could not be happier. It was yeah. so cute. Good for them. Um, but did you see what happened? Like I want to say it's like two weeks ago that someone broke into their house. Yeah, I saw that. Like, what? Yeah. yeah, this he said that, like, he's been dealing with this chick for a while, and mm-hmm. then she broke in, and he pepper sprayed her. Yeah. And then got her arrested. So, and, but, God, I hate people. Oh, yeah. So, he said, um, he said, a woman that we don't know entered our home unannounced. Um, he said, upon entering our back door, I immediately subdued her with OC slash pepper spray and was able to lock her out. I called the police, and she was apprehended and arrested. And then the Los Angeles Police Department spokesperson confirmed that a woman was arrested at the address um, on the morning of January 2nd. And according to NBC News, it's not wild. Like sometimes I think about them when I'm re- like researching and I'm reading articles. Like sometimes articles about influencers will pop up on like NPR, NBC. Oh, yeah. And I'm just like, this is like wild. Like, well, it's part of the world now. Yeah, I mean, we've talked about this before that influencers are the new wave of celebrity. Yeah. People are caring less and less about movie stars and music people, and they're caring more about influencers. Yeah. Because they're more obtainable and, like, relatable. Yeah. So, but anyway, so according to NBC, Julian said that the person who broke into their home had been harassing them for two months, Mm -hmm. and he said that he initially tried to keep the incident offline because they just, they really don't like sharing private things. No, it also gets people more likely to do it like this is the yeah. sad thing if you're like guys like your phone number gets leaked and you guys please don't call me people are gonna be like people have her number and yeah. then they'll try and call it so yeah. it's like please don't come to my house people know they're how they couldn't go to their house right like it's this weird i'm like no so like trying to protect yourself you actually get more unsafe right yeah i saw that happen with um Oh, with the Gabby Hanna thing. Yeah. When that guy went to her house, everyone was like, well, how do you find her address? And then people were like, oh, well, her address is blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah like it My sucks. favorite is like once your phone number gets leaked or your address gets leaked and people are like, your phone number is showing. It's this. It's this, this number. This time stamp. Yeah. And like, this time stamp. And then it's like, just so you know, this picture is circulating. And it's like, well, stop posting the picture. Stop right. circulating it. Yeah. Like people, it's either out of good intent and they just don't realize it or they are trying to get attention or they're just. Yeah. If something ever does slip in our videos, DM me. Yeah. Because that's how I've realized it is someone has DM me and been like, hey, at this timestamp, I yeah. can see license plate or I could see blah, yeah. blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, crap. And then we go and fix it. Yeah. But like 200 people commenting and being like, like it's just bringing so much attention to yes, it. Yes, it is. But again, it, I, we know it's with good intention. Yes, it's always. Just, it, yeah, yeah. So he said he was trying to keep the whole thing offline um, because he wanted to, you know, not have to deal with this publicly. But he said that he was notified that a media outlet had gotten a hold of the information and they were about to release. Yeah. An article. Also, you don't want to give any attention to the person doing it. They might get yeah. off, but they might like like right being like, oh they're talking about me right like that guy from gabby hannah yes it was all for his own TikTok yes. talk that he wanted to promote yeah so he just said i wanted you to hear what happened from me first but we haven't gotten any follow-up since then and i don't think we will no yeah um okay in shorter news 
Iggy Azalea. I feel like I haven't heard her name in a long time. Yeah, she dropped off for a minute. Yeah, I think it's because she got in trouble for some racist remarks. Girl. Yeah. Stop it. Yeah. Be so, better. Be better. So um, she's joining OnlyFans. Um, <laughs> yeah. And this is causing, like, hey, quite a no. stir. Sorry. Blaze has decided it is now toy Play time. time. <laughs> come here. Up. Come here. Come snug. Come. Ah, ah. Leave it. Up. Come snuggies. Good boy. Good boy. Oh, thank you for the kiss. Yeah, get her. So this is causing a stir online because back in April, she got in a little bit of, of trouble, a little bit of hot water because she tweeted out a couple things basically saying like i would never be on only fans because people were begging her to be <laughs> never say never yeah when the she, money needs it uh-huh she was like i would never be on only fans you will never catch me on there it's not my thing and then once people were like why are you like dogging on yeah. only fans she was like well of course i support sex workers and like you know try to double back on it but you know whatever so i will never be on only fans i love how i just said i never say never but yeah i will never do because i'm too freaking awkward <laughs> yeah, it would be like there like someone would be like all right we're gonna pose nude now and you'd be like peace sign peace sign thumbs up fish face <laughs> does this look good <laughs> just most awkward squat in the world it's because it's literally not my vibe i don't have that yeah i don't have that that vibe right yeah it takes a certain different type of confidence yes yeah it takes a lot of sexual confidence yes i am confident privately I'm very, yes, I'm very confident privately, but yeah. nope, can't do it publicly. Yeah. So she said in a statement to Variety magazine, she said, admittedly, I never knew OnlyFans was a place where I could be so creative. So I didn't expect to be collaborating with them on my biggest project to date. So she's not doing it because she wants to post sexy stuff on OnlyFans. She's doing it because she's releasing a massive project that she wants to promote. And she knows this is like the best way to do it. But All right. Whatever. So she What's said, the project? Um, so she Sex said. Tapes? That's what I thought. She said the project is it's called Hotter Than Hell. And she said it's a year long project that will consist of uncensored photos, videos, collaborations with visual artists, exclusive merch and content, all taking inspiration from pioneering centerfold models from the 90s, as in like Pamela Anderson. So it sounds like the project is sex work. Yeah. So I'm not sure because she she tried to make it sound in the article like it's like some music project or like art project. Not that like certain explicit photos can't be art, but yeah. this just sounds like like sex work to me, which is totally which is fine. fine. But then she's trying to be like, it's well, like she's it's still not. yeah, she's still not accepting that. Right. Yeah. So I guess we'll see how that turns out. See you in a year. See you in a year, yeah. Um, in other short news, TikToker Bryce Hall was claiming he was going to be a dad. Um, and he posted, I have been hiding this from social media for about six months now and felt it was the right thing to do. But with rumors starting to spread through, uh, with, with rumors starting to spread, thought I'd address it. Yes, I will be a father in 2023. No, I won't reveal the baby mama out of respect for her privacy. And so... And, oh, and he posted ultrasound photos. So people were going wild because they were like, who could the mom be? And a lot of people were thinking it was Addison Ray. And so she was getting hounded with like messages of people oh. like asking if she was pregnant, if she was the mom. And everyone so like everyone was freaking out and trying to figure out who it was. And it ended up not being true. Um, he was on a live like I want to say a day later or a few days later. And he said that he only posted that because he lost a bet. So but like. Not a lot of people saw that live. Yeah. So if you hadn't seen that live. You would it, think it was true. And right. also, poor Addison Ray. Right. Like, once you hear that this is affecting someone else. Like, first of all, it's not funny to joke about a fake pregnancy. No. Like, we've, we've learned this. Like, it's not funny. No one thinks it's hilarious. Like, you're just freaking people out. But then once you find out that this is affecting someone else negatively. You stop it. Why would you not come forward and make like an official statement and be like, oh, this was a joke? Like, how is it a joke? Can you explain to me how it's a joke? Oh, girl. <laughs> Where was the joke? Where, where's the funny part? I'm waiting for the punchline. Right. Can't find it. It's just awkward. Like, it's, it's weird. Like, why? Are, yeah. So anyway, just here to clarify, in case you missed the live, he's not going to be a dad. It was a joke. He lost. Well, it wasn't a joke. It was a, a bet? lie. <laughs> yeah, it was a lie. And he lost a bet. So All right. It was very strange. Ha ha ha. Ha yeah. So funny. Oh my God. Next news article, please. <laughs> 
Um, and shorter news, other shorter news, Zoe 101 is coming back uh, with Jamie Lynn Spears confirming that Zoe 102 is in the works, bringing back much of the old cast, and it will follow the alumni of the Coast Academy cast. Um, and Victoria Justice and Austin Butler have already confirmed that they're not coming back, but it's supposed to air at the end of this year, and I am very curious. Were people really obsessed with Zoe 101? I really did like the show. Oh, I did not. Oh. I thought the acting was so bad. Oh, yeah, for sure. But, like, I loved Wizards of Waverly Place. Yeah. And, like, that acting was terrible, too. Yes. I don't know what it was. Like, I mean, I grew up on Disney and Nickelodeon. Yeah. All the acting was terrible. I don't yes. know what it was, but Zoe 101 was just outwardly it made my body cringe with how bad the acting was. Oh, no. I couldn't get through an episode. Well, maybe also after. the set. I was like, what is this futuristic, but board, like the weird boarding school, college. Yeah. Beach town, California. I did not know what was going on. I, I, I couldn't keep up. I was done with it. It was very strange. Yeah. Well, I'm just wondering like how this is going to go because her main audience is our generation and our yeah. generation is pro Britney, not pro Jamie Lynn. Yeah, I don't know why so, they thought this was the way to do it. Because I like, even though I would watch one or two episodes, because like when Fuller House came out, I watched one or two That's episodes. That's another one. I, I was so, oh, uh, I yeah. Couldn't. Yeah, that one I could barely make it through. Um, but I watched, watched one or two episodes of Fuller House just to like see if it revitalized any type of serotonin in my brain from my childhood. And so I would have done the same with 102, like Zoe 102, if it wasn't Jamie Lynn Spears. So I'm wondering if, yeah. if it's just going to crash and burn because we're all here to support Britney. The first episode will get some views and then no one will watch it after that. Yeah, I think so too. Um, all right. And last short news, Andrew Tate and his brother were briefly moved from the Romanian jail into a hospital because it, they haven't come forward and said who, but one of the brothers apparently had an underlying medical condition and when they, yeah, yeah, when they alerted the staff, the staff th took them to a hospital, check them out, and immediately sent them back. <laughs> so they, got, they got out of jail for like 10 hours and then were taken right back. <laughs> but I saw all these articles circulating around being like, Andrew Tate and his brother got out of jail. No, he's right back. He's in the, don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. He's Thank back you. where he belongs. He is, nope, no more. Bye-bye now. Yep. All right. Are you ready for some good news? Please, for the love of God. The All love right. of Miley Cyrus. All right. Do you like my shoe? <laughs> love that. Literally, remember how we were like, what are some suggestions of, and someone was like, tell Rachel to put her dogs away. <laughs> nope. I can't and will not ever keep my feet on the floor. No. Unless I'm actively walking. I can't, yeah. my feet will not be on the floor. I hate it. I, I hate sitting like I'm supposed to, I, my feet have to be on something. I have to be curled up. Yeah. I can't sit. Who sits with the feet on the floor? Unless I'm at a fancy no restaurant. One. Even then I don't like it. I know. You're like crouched in your chair. I will let, if we're there for too long, I end up putting my, like one of my feet under my other leg. Oh yeah. Like sitting like this and like dangling my other foot. Yeah. I don't know what it is. I just wiggles i saw on tiktok that it's part of having adhd but basically <laughs> according to tiktok if you blink you have, you have ADHD. ADHD. <laughs> so, um all right according to good news network a study last year found that u.s cancer deaths had declined by 33 percent since 1991 <laughs> so this is equivalent to around i was born then oh wow i was the year after you <laughs> facts mm. figures <laughs> So this is equivalent to around 3.8 million people alive thanks to various efforts to combat the diseases. Um, eat your dandelions. Eat your dandelions. <laughs> I need to do a whole episode about that. All I remember is dandelions. Dandelions. <laughs> Roundup. So uh, between 2019 and 2020, cancer death rates dropped 1.5%. Um, and this is especially due to the HPV vaccine that was correlated to a 65% drop in cervical cancer rates. Mm. which is incredible. Um, and then also across West, I just want to talk about this because no one seems to know about this. And I learned about it in biology at my community college that I went to for a little bit and it has scarred me. So if I have to be scarred, so do you. No, that is a terrible way to look at life. <laughs> so no, um, there are two types of people. One person that's like, I had to go through this hell. Mm -hmm. I want to make it so no one else has to. Right. And there's a second type of person who is, I went through this hell, so everybody else has to as well. Yeah. It's like when I read a scary story, I'm like, who can I tell so I'm no. less scared? No. <laughs> You're the bad person. Yep. You're the, be the good person. Well, it's a good story. Just With tell good it. News. I'm mad at you. Go tell it. There we go. So across West Africa and India, um, they have n succeeded in nearly eradicating guinea worm disease. 
So guinea worm? Guinea worm disease. Please explain. Okay. So if I don't you, know. if you have a cut on you, this is what I learned in community college biology back in 2012. Could have been updated since then, but this is what I know from back then. If you have a cut on you, and this is really prevalent in Africa, if you have a cut on you and then you like an open wound and then you swim in infested water, you can't see them. They're like microscopic. Um, the eggs, the microscopic eggs will get into that wound and then the worm will start growing. Um, and then you can actually see it. It grows so big that you can like see it under the skin. And then when you get near water again, it comes out and spits its eggs into the water source. And that is how the life cycle is continued. So when that's how people got rid of it is they would get near a water source so that it would pop out of their skin and then they'd grab it and then they'd start getting it out of them. So guinea worm disease nearly eradicated. There's your good news for the day. I <laughs> hate everything that just happened. Isn't that awful? Yeah. I no. Yeah. So good thing you have therapy in nine minutes. <laughs> okay. Therapist is going to be like, so how's your relationship? How's your work life? You're going to be like, guinea worm disease. <laughs> it is disgusting and I hate it. Yes. I thought ticks were the only thing I had to worry about. No. no oh, no. what is the thing? I can't remember what it is. Never mind. Continue. I don't want to try and figure it out. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, we're making basically like Good News Network published this massive article talking about how we're making big strides in cancer, big strides in like these very specific targeted diseases that are in Africa that never get funded mm -hmm. because, you know, they're, I can't remember if we're supposed to say underdeveloped or third world. I feel like we're not supposed to say third world or we're supposed to say underdeveloped, but I could be mixing them up. So if I'm mixing them up, I'm sorry, but they're less developed. The countries that have been given a crappy hand. Continue. There we go. Yeah. No one funds this kind of medical, yes. but now we're starting to. And so. About time. Yeah. Oh, oh also they're starting to like work because there's no vaccine for Ebola, but they, there are, they are starting to see through like teaching hygiene practices and creating clinics in uh, different African countries. They're starting to lessen the Ebola outbreaks, which are great. Um, and then I also read an article, and this was an actual article, not something I saw on TikTok. <gasps> I love this for you. <laughs> I read an article this morning talking about how a breakthrough vaccine to treat deadly brain tumors just passed phase three trials. Um, it is a long name that I cannot pronounce, but it's to treat aggressive, an aggressive brain tumor called a geoblastoma, which I can only pronounce because I watch Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> um, and on average, people who are diagnosed with geoblastomas only live 15 to 17 months after diagnosis. But now they have a five-year survival rate due to this vaccine and the trial. And it's about okay. to come out. So, yay. Love a vaccine. Um, a man from Luck. So Luck, like you're so lucky. A man from Luck. I am so lucky. <laughs> a man from Luck, Wisconsin just won the lottery. Oh, my God. <laughs> How funny. These jokes write themselves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he won 15.1 million. Same. And he bought the winning ticket at Wayne's Food Plus on 151 Butternut Ave. <gasps> Butter? What? Okay. Can we go to this place? They have great names for everything. Right? Um, he came into the Wisconsin Lottery Office in Madison on Monday to claim his winning okay, ticket. Okay. Madison, he needed a better name. Yes. It should have been like Winners. <laughs> Winners Lane. <laughs> Um, and he said when he picked up his ticket, dreams really do come true. I actually won fifteen point one million and two dollars because I also had a two dollar winning ticket for the same drawing. I love that so much. So awesome. How much does taxes take? It's so much. It takes like half. Yeah, I want to say I've read that it takes like half. Like, yeah, yeah. But always take the lump sum. Yes, I also saw that TikTok. Yes. That was like always take the lump sum. I learned that in high school. Oh wow. Yeah. I Speaking of which, I watched a TikTok last night that was how to um, submit your chicken when they're being aggressive during nope. breeding season. Oh, it's a rooster. You a put roost them upside down and sway them. Yes. Watched that this morning with Abby. It was a three minute video. Will I ever own a rooster? No. Have I ever owned a rooster? No. Do I have a rooster attacking me? No. But did I watch the whole three minutes? You flip yes. up and you sway them. You put them down. You take your hand away. Yeah. What? I know now how to submit a rooster. A rooster. <laughs> Um, all right. There's a really great guy back in uh, around Christmas time. He saved the lives of 24 people by breaking into a school in Chick Cheektowaga, upstate New York, during the worst storm in a generation. Sorry if she mispronounced that. And yes. it has a cultural heritage thing. Oh, I, I know it has to do with some <laughs> a tribe that used to live there. Okay. It still does. Ch 
Cheek, it's spelled C H E E K T O W A G A. Cheek Towaga, I want to okay. say. All right. If you know the correct pronunciation, please let us know below. Let us know. Um, so he ended up saving a bunch of people. He rescued 24 people from their cars during a, the Buffalo blizzard and sheltered them in a nearby school. Amazing. Um, and he broke the window of Edge Academy on Christmas Eve in order to get two dozen people, including several seniors and two dogs. <gasps> It's always the dogs that get me <sighs> out of a hurricane force winds, snow and deathly cold temperatures. He borrowed he borrowed the Academy's snowblower to get people unstuck from the roads because people were like literally trapped in their cars. Yeah, it with, happens because the snowstorm just came in with no. I mean, they had warning, but like they didn't know how bad it was going to yeah. be. And or exactly when it was going to start. They right. Been trying to get home. Yeah. So there were all these people stuck in their cars. So he broke in, stole the snowblower, got people unstuck from their their cars. Um, and then once he got them inside of the elementary school to shield them from the winds, he found them granola bars, water, blankets, apple juice, cereal. Um, and they stayed there and sat out the storm before they left. He cleaned up every single trace of like them being there, like put all I the love trash him. Yeah, in the waste bin. Um, he rep- Oh, my God. One, one of the group, Mario Johnson, one of the people he saved, actually went back to the school and replaced their stock of granola bars. And to, oh my God. Yeah. And he inquired about how to fix the window that they had to break in order to get in. Um, the school declined to press any charges, nor did they accept any. Yeah. No, if anyone, if yeah. they press charges, I think we'd all go riot. Oh, right. They just, they said they're happy that everyone is safe and warm. And they said the selfless, selflessness that people showed to help others during the storm is what Western New York is really made of. So no one got charges pressed. Everyone was safe. And the Buffalo Bills got a hold of this story oh. and they gave him season tickets. Let's see. A let's jersey. See. A football. Um, they gave him. A new him truck. <laughs> a snowblower. Wait, why? A did, scarf. Why did I not write it down? A bu- why did I not write it down? Emily, what did they give him? I'm never going to know because I'm going to forget after we record. No. Google it. Google it. Google it. Google it. You have three minutes. Okay. I have therapy in four. Go, okay, go, okay, go, okay. go, go, go. Buffalo, Bills, Gay. Saved, Man, Snowstorm, School. Keywords here. Keywords, people. Okay. 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 Go, okay. go, go, go. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Okay. 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 Awarded Super Bowl tickets. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. So, that's a good one. Yeah. All right. And last good news. Let's see. Let's see. Because I have a couple, but I got to pick. I got to pick. Um, oh, or do you want to do a question? People, One question, go. Yeah, people Five, have been six, asking. seven, eight. Oh, my God. Um, Emily? If you could live anywhere, where would you live? I like where I live. <laughs> if you could live anywhere? I really like where I live. Oh, my God. I want to live on, like, a beach in France. I would get lonely. Well, I assume I'm bringing everyone with me. Oh, you didn't say that. Okay, if you could live anywhere and bring everyone with you, where would you live? I like where I live. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm a really content person. Yeah. I very much, and just as long as I have my people and, like, a comfortable space, I'm pretty much set. Okay. Like, I didn't, I, I like where we live. Like, the, doesn't, the, the weather's, like, 70 all year round. Yeah. There's the beach. There's the mountains. My family's down the road. My friends are all here. My dogs are here. I'm just thinking politically. Oh, I just need joy to come, and we're good. We're set. Yes. Okay, well, then go to karaoke song. I don't do karaoke. If you had to, go to karaoke song. Literally don't know. I don't know. I just do it with other people. I'm like, pick you pick. I'll sing along with you. Oh, my God. I don't have one. Mine's Don't Rain on My Parade, but the Glee cast version. I hate you. (laughs) That's all the time we have for today. Thank you guys for listening or watching. Please subscribe and follow. Um, Leave questions or things you want us to talk about below. Always DM Emily if you have anything. Don't DM me because I won't see it on time. I go through like once every two weeks in my DMs. (laughs) I love you guys. You're wonderful, beautiful human beings. I'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of All Things Internet. Please make sure to like and follow our podcast on whichever platform you're currently listening to it on. And make sure to follow us at Podcast ATI on Twitter, where you can ask questions and get the latest updates on our show. We love you. Thanks for listening. I'm Rachel Ballinger, and this has been All Things Internet.